Hello everyone, welcome back. And in this video in the trigonometry series, we are going to talk about the law of sines. The law of sines is a principle that says how to relate all the angles of a triangle to their side lengths. It doesn't, it's not the only law. We're also going to see the law of cosines later, uh, not in this video, but okay. So here's what the law of sines is. Let's say that we have a triangle whose angles are measured A, B, and C. Those are capital letters. And let's say that the opposite side to each angle are in lowercase. So the opposite to big A is little a, opposite to big B is little b, and opposite to big C is little c. It's a little hard to see here, but hopefully the pattern, or with C and little c, but hopefully the pattern makes sense. So the law of sines is that if you take the sine of an angle and divide it by the uh, opposite side length, it is constant. It does not matter which of the three angles you are looking at. It, it depends on which triangle you're looking at, but if you're on the same triangle, each of the three angles with their opposite side length will give you the same value. So I think it's worth looking at what does the law of sines say when you have a right triangle? So for a right triangle, let's say it's big C, that's 90 degrees. In that case, sine is one, and the whole thing simplifies just a little bit where sine of C is one. So that, uh, since all these are equal to each other, if we multiply, um, so we know sine of A over little a is one over little c. So if we multiply both sides by A, we get sine of big A is A over C. And similarly, if we take this equation multiply by little b, we get sine of big B is b little b over c. Let's draw this as a right triangle. Um, so one thing that we can see is that, for example, sine of big A is little a over c. It's the opposite side length divided by the hypotenuse. And sine of big B is little b over c. It's the opposite over the hypotenuse. Um, as expected if you know your right angle trigonometry. But this does not, the general law of sines does not need it to be a right angle. Okay, so we'll just do one problem here. We're, we want to solve for all the angles and side lengths of a triangle where two of the angles are known, 40 degrees and 60 degrees. One angle is unknown, and we know that opposite the 40 degree angle is a side length of four. So how are we going to do this? Um, so first of all, we know that 180 degrees is equal to 40 degrees plus 60 degrees plus theta. So, um, so let's uh, subtract 100. And like, you know, we can solve. So theta is 100 degrees. Uh, no, sorry, I meant to say it's 80 degrees. Um, so that's the easy first part. We've got our angle. And then using the law of sines, we've got that sine of, let's just start at the top, sine of 60 degrees over y is sine of 40 degrees over 4, which is sine of theta, which is 80 degrees, over x. So for this, uh, we, like, we want to solve for x. Uh, if we look at this middle term, it's, it's a number we can just calculate on a calculator. So we can take the correct equality. So, um, so sine of 80 degrees over x equals sine 40 degrees over 4 gives, um, or we want to solve for x. So let's multiply both sides by x. Uh, actually, I want to do this quicker. Um, what I'm going to do instead, 
is I'm going to take the reciprocal of both sides. And then multiply by sine of 80. Okay, so that's solved for x. And then 2, um, we can take sine of 60 degrees over y equals sine of 40 degrees over 4. Solve for y. And using very similar steps, we get that y is equal to 4 sine 60 degrees over sine 40. Okay, so we know theta, we know x and y. Let's um, let's just approximate, make sure it makes sense. So x, if we were to plug this into a calculator, four times the sine of, I mean, I need to make sure to be in degree mode. So four times sine of 80 over sine of 40 gives 6.128. And y is approximately, um, it's gonna be similar, but instead of 80, we've got 60, 5.389. So just to look at this, uh, like 60, 40, and 80 are all angles that are acute. Um, they're less than 90 degrees. So we'd expect the three side lengths to be sort of similar to each other, and that's what we get. Um, I'm gonna write this on a triangle here. So we've got four, about 6.128, and about 5.389 with what were our angles? They were 40 degrees, 60 degrees, 80 degrees. And what I'm checking here is that the larger angles have a larger side length and the smaller angles have a smaller side length. That geometrically makes sense. It can also be good sometimes to check that if you add up two consecutive side lengths, it's bigger than the third one, because it's impossible for the sum of two side lengths to be smaller than the third side length. Anyway, um, so let's just box these values, the exact ones, along with the value for theta. And that's how you can solve for all the sides of a triangle for certain kinds of triangles where the law of sines works. Okay, well, uh, I'll see you later. Um